offers beautiful looks and gorgeous engine note, fill it with soul and passion. Oh, cock. Anyway, you see the problem. This is what Alfa Romeo is about. To be honest, I could take the road test of the 156, which we did nine years ago, and just change the 6 to a 9. Still, you never know. Maybe this time things will be different. Let's start with the looks. That front end, those lights, that sweeping bonnet line and the striking grille. And it's the same story around the back. Inside, there are lots of silvery bits and lovely dials. In fact, there are two words that perfectly encapsulate the stylistic beauty of this car. So, business as usual when it comes to appearances, but that could be the last time I put my hand in my pocket. You see, Alfa Romeo has now put I'm German in charge of the company, and he's a man who used to be responsible for things like BMW M Series cars, and more recently, the Rolls-Royce Phantom. Stuff that doesn't fall apart. Apparently, he's passionate about build quality, and he's promising that the electrics will no longer be installed by a toddler group. And you better be right, frankly, because this thing is now stuffed with electrical gizmos. It's got an electronic key, it's got automatic climate control, it's got an MP3-compatible stereo, it's got parking sensors, you can have sat-nav, and you can have an integrated mobile phone. All this on a car which, at £22,500, is two grand less than the equivalent 3 Series. Now, we won't know if this quality regime works until you tell us what the 159 is like to live with. But for now, there's a more pressing issue. The danger is that under this new regime, the alternator will work, the headlights will come on when you turn the switch, but the 159 will have lost its essential alpha... you know what? And it won't drive with all the alpha traditional... diddly and doodah. To find out, we need to take it for a good drive. And for that, we come to the River Humber. It's an amazing feat of nature, which every day drains one-fifth of England. My job today is to get from one side to the other, and to keep the Alpha on its toes, I'll be racing against a man. Yes, it's another of our real-life situation tests. This is Graham Bonus. He's rather tall, and on this occasion, that's a good thing. You see, the easiest and quickest way across the mile-wide river is the magnificent Humber Bridge. But in our race, neither of us is allowed to use it. So, I'm going to drive around the estuary the long way, starting here, go up here, bit of motorway, and then this series of spaghetti-like B-roads where I'll find out if the Alpha still has the soul and the passion. And Graham, he's going to do something rather amazing. He's going to walk across. Is there a risk that you'll just get stuck? There is, yeah. There's a risk that when I'm in the thick mud that's across there, Exhaustion can maybe get the better of me, and then I'll just, you know, pass out. So you haven't got any, you haven't got a breathing tube or a small aqua lung or anything like that. You can only breathe as long as your head is above the water, and it will only just be above the water. Yeah. So you've either got to make it or you drown. Correct. What else can I say? But three, two, one, go. <laughs> I'm not going to be beaten by a man in a giant condom walking across a muddy river. Graham's journey of 1.8 miles should take him about an hour and a half, and my journey of 65 miles should take me about the same. I'll just tell you very quickly about the new engine in this car while I'm in the village. It's a 2.2-litre petrol four-cylinder. It's very modern. It's got words like variable written on the top of it. There's a lovely bit in this engine as you get into the higher reaches of the rev range. It just, it really comes alive. That's a quid in the box, whatever that is. As th 
thousands of tons of tidal water tore away at Graham's muscles, I left the B roads for a quick motorway blast. Here we go. Get into fifth. The great thing about an Alpha is somehow the Italians do know how to make a car feel elemental. But I suppose that's not surprising from the nation that gave us Verdi. It was time to leave the motorway. Ahead lay 35 more miles of B road. Now it gets interesting. Graham was past the halfway point, and despite his immense strength, he was struggling against the incoming 12 mile per hour tide. I was also struggling to keep hold of my money. I'm just stringing this series of sweeping bends together like someone who's really skilled at using a fork to roll up their spaghetti. shimmy from the front it's all it's all frisky like one of those paleo ponies this is getting expensive the alpha's handling had cost me dear four quid in fact but now we were in the final stages of the race Stretch bit. I'm looking for the for the waterside beacon. There it is. That's the beacon. Sake. I'd lost and I was broke. Congratulations anyway. Thank you. Well, do you mind if I don't?